Hey guys, Kalf here, and today I am running away from a cow. <laughs> uh, so this is for an adventure map that I probably won't finish, but I showed some tech from. Uh, but it's essentially four-stage swing. So basically the goal of this is to have a four-stage swing. If you had a player and he was running, it, you would be able to accomplish this as well, but I don't have the 3D model assets for that right now, but I thought I would just use something I already had. So with this, there is a four-stage swing, and I mean that in the sense that you have four stages to this animation. You have le left leg moving forward, le left leg moving backwards, right leg moving forward, right leg moving backwards. And this ends up with four stages because for each of them, your leg moves forward and backwards and uh, there is two different directions they can go, basically. So you can kind of figure that out yourself, what that means by four stage, but this could actually be any stage. So this is kind of like an animation value. And uh, also this guy is turning his head towards me for a weird reason, but ignore that. <laughs> uh, okay. So let's get into the commands and I will have these pasted in the description in a separate naming convention. Like there won't be the, this scoreboard won't be the name of the scoreboard, but I just wanted to use this because it's nice and clean and it has comments and it's nice. Okay. So this is how we accomplish the four stage animation. It's very mathematical kind of. So we have a timeline, which is going to be a scoreboard that is on this entity. So he's going to have some score on the animation score. And we are going to increment that score by some input speed, okay? So this is nice because I can basically change the speed to five and he walks faster. I can change it to 10, he walks even faster. Uh, or I can make it one and he walks slow. So it's incremented by whatever your input value is. Uh, and then there is also a secondary input value that is multiplied by four to, to show what is the uh, rotation angle. Uh, so this is like what it basically what is the max for each of the stages okay so in this case I put it as 10 so that means that there are 10 it can move forward 10 degrees backwards 10 degrees in all four stages so each stage is a frame size of 10 degrees basically 10 increments all right so then we check if you are greater than four times because there's four stages if you are greater than four times times one of the rotation maxes go to zero okay so this will just basically reset us when we reach the max number so in this case when we're above 40 if you have an input rotation of 10 degrees then when you're at above 40 then you're just going to go back to zero so 39 and then it'll go zero okay so that gives you basically 40 points counting from zero to 40 or whatever your input rotation max is all right uh, so then we have to turn these into, uh, sequences essentially. So this will give us, uh, where we are in the sequence. Okay. So the first one is we have to get the motion sequence. So we grab whatever their current number is, which is just a number counting from zero to 439. And we divide it by whatever the input is, which is the maximum swing rotation. So if your number was, uh, 35 and your input max is 10 then 10 times 4 is 40 so then you have 35 divided by 40 okay but keep in mind that uh the way that this is going to uh 35 divided by 10 sorry 35 divided by 10 and then this does a floor a truncation so 35 would round to three okay so your number will go zero one two three zero one two three okay so then we have to take the t okay the number you're currently at and get the modulus okay so this figures out how so this first one will figure out what sequence you're on so the sequence will be zero one two three zero one two three and then this one will calculate where you are in the sequence so this will go zero two to nine zero one two three four five six seven eight nine zero one two three four five six seven eight nine but if you had a bigger rotation value for this in value like maybe 30 degrees swing then it will go zero to 30. okay so then this just calculates uh essentially what the output value should be based on where you are because we have a number that counts from 0 to 40 right it just counts up sequentially but what we want is something that goes uh negative 10 then it goes to 0 then it goes to 10 then it goes to 0 then it goes to negative 10 and it just loops that that's our four stage sequence of swing right so that'll give us the rotation values we need to input so it basically does that by seeing okay so if we're in the first sequence then the value we need, oh, let me actually put those numbers back here. The first value we need is negative 10. So basically it uh, takes whatever the max swing is and it subtracts that from where you are in the current swing. 
so if you were at the uh, beginning of the current swing, then you're at zero after this modulus, you have zero, and zero minus 10 is negative 10. Uh, and then this next one, it basically just multiplies it by negative one, because I believe I r didn't do it in this specific order. I might have gone like this sequence like that. There you go. Uh, okay. So then for the next one, and here's kind of the math calculations. You can see here what it's doing. In this case, I used 15. Okay. So then the next sequence. So we went from, uh, we start, we went counted down, even though our current number was counting up, we're counting down. So now we have to make the next one go counting, but negatively. So we just take wherever we are and we multiply it by negative one because this is zero, one, two, three in the negative. So zero, negative one, negative two, negative three, negative four. Okay, so then the third sequence is counting back to zero. So negative 10, negative nine, negative eight, negative seven. So you just subtract. And uh, then the other case is if you are in the zero sequence. Uh, so the zero sequence is right here. So that's like this. The zero sequence, which it does not have to make a case for, is where you just count up to 10. So basically, zero sequence, we count up to 10. One sequence, we count down to zero. Two sequence, we count to negative 10. And three sequence, we count from negative 10 to zero. And the output will just have a number. So if I go ahead and put that in the sidebar, you'll see the number uh, counting from zero to 30 on the right, zero, one, two, three, all the way to 40. And you will see the out number on counting in that sequential order. And uh, let me go ahead and slow this down for you. Okay, so we are, let me restart it. Okay, so we're at the beginning. Okay, so the out is one. And you can see out of one, out is still counting upwards. And then once we reach 10, out will start counting downwards to zero. Now out is back to zero. So now we're going to count negative. Okay, so then now that we hit negative 10, we're going back and we're counting back up to zero and that sequence repeats. Then you can basically take this number for out and store it onto the different rotations. So it makes the right arm stored with whatever the current value it is, and the left arm will be the inverse so that they're swinging opposite of each other. And then I added a little bit of the numbers to the head to make its head bob uh, as it's running. So you can kind of use this number to have four stage sequences. So if I go into uh, spectator mode, Okay, uh, you can see that there's two armor stands here to accomplish this. So one controls the legs and uh, one controls the head. So I can look off screen so you can see the render exit. So one controls the head and one controls holding the uh, legs so that they swing at the correct orientation. I have a separate video kind of showing how to do this in the sense that you just have to put align the uh, 3D model so that when it's in the arm, it lines up with the arm. You can see the arm here is pointing down and it points directly in the same direction as the leg here. Uh, and it's oriented in such a way so that when it rotates by a certain amount of degrees, it doesn't disconnect, which is nice. Anyways, that's it for this one. A little bit high level. Sorry if it's a little disorganized, but I haven't made a video in a while and don't have a ton on my plate for what I want to do. But without any other issues here, let me know in the comments if you thought this was useful. I will include these commands in the description with the comments here. Uh, and I will just rename the word Walker Anim to uh, animation sequence or something like that. Uh, anyways, that's all for today, guys. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. Peace. Oh, side note, I do know that animated java is a thing uh but this is a little bit cleaner than animated java in some ways and it can animate based on the speed i'm sure animated java has all these capabilities but this to me at the time seemed easier and i made it before animated java and even now it would probably be less models because it's only two model armor stands so it's probably less armor stands and less models in total so it's probably more efficient it's just harder to figure out how to do it uh, in general animated java is nice but uh if you can figure out the math to get the thing that you want it's probably more efficient also this guy's head is following me in such a weird way <laughs> all right see you guys